This odd strain of agouti mice provides a visual clue. Despite the difference in color and size, they're twins, genetically identical. Both, therefore, have a particular gene called agouti. But in the yellow mouse, it's switched on all the time. And as a consequence, it inappropriately blocks a receptor in what's called the satiation center of the brain, which tells mice and us when we're full. So the yellow animals literally eat themselves into obesity, diabetes, and cancer. So what switched the agouti gene off in the thin mouse? Exercise? Atkins? No, a chemical tag called a methyl molecule. Composed of carbon and hydrogen, it affixes near the agouti gene, shutting it down. Living creatures possess millions of tags like these. Some, like methyl molecules, attach to DNA directly. Other types grab the proteins called histones around which DNA wraps and tighten or loosen them to turn genes on or off. And in simple terms, uh, this contact can be thought of as hugging the DNA. And if these proteins hug the DNA very tightly, then it is hidden from view for the cell, and a gene that is hidden cannot be utilized. These tags and others control gene expression through a vast network in the body called the epigenome. Epigenetics literally translates into just meaning above the genome. So if you, if, if you would think, for example, of the genome as being like a computer, the hardware of, the, of, of a computer, the epigenome would be like the software that tells the computer when to work, how to work, and how much. Perhaps the best example of an epigenetic phenomenon, you're actually looking at it. You see skin and eyes and teeth and hair and organs all have exactly the same DNA. You cannot genetically tell my skin from my eyes or my teeth, yet you couldn't really imagine that these are the same tissues. What distinguishes cells is not their genes, but how these genes are switched on or off by epigenetics. And as development unfolds, certain switches need to be thrown. Then you can think of it as a light switch. Switch on the gene, the light is shining, the gene is active, makes a cell do a certain thing or the light switch is off, everything is dark, that gene is off. And as the cells divide, the memory of whether it's a liver cell or a brain cell, that's brought about by these switches, and the switches are incredibly stable. But occasionally, some epigenetic switches can be flipped to turn off the overactive agouti gene, researchers gave pregnant mothers foods rich in vitamins like B12 or folic acid, from which they could make those methyl tags that silence genes. The change was small. The effect, huge. Fat yellow mothers gave birth to thin brown pups, no longer prone to disease. This study, why it is so important, is it opened the black box up and told us that this early stage of development in the womb, basically, is linked to adult disease susceptibilities by literally tiny little changes in the epigenome. Agouti mice revealed the impact of an epigenetic change, one that occurred without altering a single chemical letter in the agouti gene. It was increasingly clear that genes needed instructions for what to do, when, and where. If the thousands of genes identified by the Human Genome Project symbolized the words in the Book of Life, it was the epigenome that determined how that book got read. We thought that by understanding the genetic code, we would understand life, disease, and then we'd all go home and be fine. 
but in fact, the Human Genome Project was just the beginning. What it did was it opened us up to this new world, getting us to the point where we're understanding another level of biology, which for the first time is up to the challenge of the biological complexity of life. One, two, three. If the epigenome controls the expression of our genes, could it solve the mystery of identical twins? These rare individuals are living illustrations of the boundary point between nature and nurture. For since their DNA is 100% the same, any difference should reveal the influence of the outside world. Get up your smile. 